Guess what, y'all? We're in St. Louis. And you know what? No Randy Orton. And you can't tell me that this guy's still injured. He's been out for nearly a year. Actually, he's been out for a year. And there's no way on this planet that a shoulder injury can be a year long. Can't tell me anything. In my humble opinion, I think that Randy Orton is done. I think he's done. He's a gun. He's he's officially retired. They still have his face up there on the uh, on the intro, but I think he's done. And I think that this I think the St. Louis fans probably either knew that or just dealing with that. But other than that, if he's still doing premiere, I mean, he's still doing premieres, doing um, showings, and still not performing, that's kind of jacked up. But in Chicago, but the the St. Louis crowd, I think they're dealing with it. They're dealing with it pretty well. All right, y'all, I fell asleep during the live broadcast, but I ended up going back and watching it again. And I'm not going to lie, the matches really were impressive. And I hate to say it, even the match with Tyler Breeze and R-Truth versus Goldust and Fandango was entertaining. Never thought I would say that, but it was. And I got to tell you, there's got to be some strong duct tape and a strong twig to hold somebody's phone up. Just saying. But... There's a few gripes that I actually do have. Well, number one, what happened to the Divas? Uh, well, not the Divas, the women's division. There was a huge resurgence for the women's division. And it was a huge push for them at WrestleMania 32. But ever since WrestleMania 32 ended, we're not really seeing a lot of them. We're only having one match a night and, and a segment. Like we had Becky Lynch and Emma, which should be a feud in my humble opinion, but it's really not a feud yet. And then we have Charlotte and Natalia, which is going to extend to Extreme Rules. Well, that's just my opinion. And I'll get into that a little bit later. But let's talk about the opener. The opener is pretty much starts off where you see both McMahon children in the ring and they have to get along and they're trying to be civil and trying to make matches together. I don't like passive-aggressive Stephanie. I don't. I've seen enough of passive-aggressive Stephanie. We know that there's motives behind her passive-aggressiveness, but it's ridiculous and we have no idea what it is. And here's the problem about having two McMahon children running the show. Shane is a lot more active. Stephanie isn't. She's passive-aggressive. She's behind the scenes trying to make the trying to make people believe that she's trying to go over a completely new leaf, being on the Ambrose Asylum, and at the very end, she's going to end up canceling the show and give Chris Jericho back his show. And I'm sorry, I've always thought there was some kind of chemistry between those two. That's just me. And especially the fact that Chris Jericho admitted that he had a crush on Stephanie, storyline-wise. And you can kind of tell there was something going on between those two. But that's just me personally. But then her giving back to Jericho, I'm like, okay, yeah, what is this? You're going to re-ask the entire feud between Dean Ambrose and Chris Jericho again after his clean win um, at Payback? He was probably the only guy at that pay-per-view that had Payback. And you're going to do this? Come on. Really? The one thing I liked about the McMahon children is you got to admit that there's always some banter, interesting banter back and forth, and there's always them butting heads. That's what really caused the entertainment to happen. That's just with, with me personally. But honestly, I really think it should have just been Shane. It shouldn't have been Stephanie there because Stephanie really didn't do much when it came to making matches. It was all Shane. And I know that Michael Cole was like, well, um, Stephanie and Shane made this decision to have this match. No, it's all Shane because Stephanie was being passive-aggressive. Well, she's being passive towards Shane and aggressive in other ways. And she didn't really do much of anything. So her being there is just purposeless. That's just me. I like Stephanie. She's a really great heel. But the thing is, she just had no purpose here at all. Now... Speaking of McMahon children, if I found out that one of my wrestlers hired a referee to screw another wrestler without my knowledge, I would be pissed. I wouldn't be pandering to them. That was the one thing that kind of pissed me off about Stephanie. If this is supposed to be the reality era, reality is if I find out that one of my employees literally hired somebody to, to literally outdo somebody or to screw someone else over without my knowledge, 
they get fired or they lose their title. Other than that, storyline wise, she should have Charlotte should have they should have announced the match right then and there that she's gonna have a match with Natalia, and it's just gonna be one on one. There will be no Ric Flair at the ring. There will be nobody to help him out. It will be one on one Extreme Rules match. Just saying. That's how I pretty much book it up. It, 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 if that's the case, because she wasn't angry at all. We did not see Shane come out there, and I'm like. You guys should be angry right now. Especially the fact that, that Nate did that. Seriously. And it was done before. And I mean, how young does this guy look if he was actually the referee for the Four Horsemen? He's pretty freaking young. Which means he was he probably was young when he did that. But other than that, the matches themselves were really good. My best match of the night definitely was the t was um, three on three. With the New Day and Big Cass versus the Vaude Villains and... Well, actually, it was three-on-four. The three-on-four tag match with the Vaude Villains and the, um, and the Dudley Boys versus the New Day. Actually, no, it was a four-on-four match. It was, it was, a, it was an eight-man tag match. But yeah, it was a New Day with, ends up with, with um, Big Cass and the Vaude Villains and, uh, um, and the Dudley Boys. That was a great match. It was. And Simon Gotch is doing a lot better on the mic. And I can actually tell. And I'm really happy that, that, that they're talking a lot more. They're starting to get a reaction now. They're actually getting some boos. And they are heels, so they're supposed to. Which the New Day is supposed to be, but you can't really tell with them. They can either be faces or heels, but they're treated as faces right now. But other than that, the fact that the VOD villains got a response made me really happy. It did. And I don't think they need to change their brand. I don't think they need to change who they are. I think they just need to stick it out and just ride it out and just find a way to captivate fans with their talking because their talking is what gets them over. And I think it was as it tasteless as it is to play off a major injury of a wrestler, especially the fact that he almost died or could have. The playoff that, yeah, I know it wouldn't be the WWE way. And I actually did talk to my friend Freddie about it, and he actually didn't make sense. But when it comes to this, I would think that was a good call. <laughs> as twisted as it is to play off somebody's injury, I think it was a good call. The Vaude Villains needed a response. They needed anything. It, it, either positive or negative. They needed this. It was a good call on their end to allow them to play off of this. And not only that, with Big Cass being there, it starts off a really great NXT feud that's going to be on the main roster between, well, once Enzo is all straight up, you have the VOD villains versus Enzo and Cass. I'm going to be real with you. I don't think the New Day is going to hold the belts anymore. As soon as they're able, if they have a number one contenders match at Extreme Rules, I'm making a prediction now. I think they're going to drop it. And when they drop it, it's going to open up all new possibilities, especially with Enzo and Cass. And I'm hoping that they feud down the line. It will be a momentous one. And hopefully Enzo will be a little bit, well, healthier to get in it. But other than that, it's going to be a, it's gonna be a, a little while until that happens. But other than that, I enjoyed that match. I really did. And honestly, the match that really impressed me the most a little bit was the over-the-top battle royal for the number one contendership to the U.S. title. And a lot of people were saying that they didn't really talk about the U.S. title much and the IC belt was getting a lot of love. But the one thing that surprised me was you got Zack Ryder in this match? Really? I mean, the guy, yes, he had his WrestleMania moment, but he only held the belt for 24 hours. And then he got his rematch to lose clean to The Miz. And then that's it? He has to keep it moving and go back to square one to the U.S. title? And not to mention, he gave an amazing performance, especially being the last, um, the second guy in there with Rusev. And speaking of that, it was the quickest battle royal I've ever seen in my life. I, had, I mean, you can go on a bathroom break and then come back. Ten people are gone. Then you can go get a snack, come back. Five people are still in there. And then when you go and do something else, you come back and there's two. It's quick. It really was a very quick match to watch. But the one thing that I really did enjoy about it was that you saw that Zack Ryder was holding his own. Even after being screwed the way he was, this guy literally had a lot of heart. And I'm hoping they don't give up on him. I mean, shoot, it was the fans that got him over in the first place. But the fact that he actually had to go back to doing the U.S. title, 
I mean, the, the U.S. title battle royal was ridiculous. And it was just sad. This guy should be a little higher than that. He needs to do what Kevin Owens is doing. And instead of Sami Zayn taking his place, he needs to be up there with Sami Zayn kicking his butt to get the title too. It needs to be a, him. He needs to be in that title picture because it wasn't fair what happened. It wasn't. And it really is messed up how they're not considering Zach to be a part of that Fatal 4-Way. It's going to be a Fatal 4-Way, y'all. Well, well, triple threat. No Fatal 4-Way because it's going to probably be Cesaro, The Miz, um, Kevin Owens, and Sami Zayn for the IC belt. Make it add a five, fifth person in there. Should need to add Zack Ryder. Just say it. But other than that, guys, the one thing that really impressed me the most was the main event. And, of course, as usual, it's AJ Styles. It's not anybody else. I'm being real here. I mean, um, uh, Roman Reigns had did his best to try to keep up. He did. He did his best to keep up, and it actually did look very well. I can see how Roman Reigns is starting to shape himself into a heel more so than a baby face. Why haven't they executed this? The guy's promo work alone screams heel. His action screams heel. Everything about Roman Reigns screams heel. So why in the world are they still trying to keep this guy a babyface? It makes no sense. I'm more impressed with his promo work because his promo work is more heelish to anything else. He needs to be a heel. Being a heel is better for him than being a babyface. That's probably why it didn't work. This guy needs to go dark. And the Usos on the side, man, they can literally have a legit Roman Empire right there. Because I don't think we're going to have the Shields reunion anytime soon. Especially how Dean Ambrose is shooting with somebody and Seth Rollins is still on the shelf. Have the Usos in there, man. Have them as part of your Roman Empire. Make them heels again. Because they're freaking boring. They need it because they're boring. Roman Reigns need it because he's boring. So can we just... Flavor it up a little bit and make these guys heels. And shoot his actions alone at the end of the show. What he did to AJ Styles is straight up heelish. So here's my question. If you've got AJ Styles, who's the baby face at the moment, that means Roman, he Roman Reigns has got to be Roman heel. <laughs> Roman Reigns has got to be the heel. And I really do believe that there's going to be a possible heel turn. Because you got AJ Styles that literally... Um, hit the Usos with a chair, but then you got Roman Reigns literally taking him to the cleaners at the very end. But other than that, make this guy heal, man. Seriously. But my overall thoughts of this of the show is this. Guys, I really did enjoy these matches. I really did. And yeah, I was tired. It wasn't because it was boring. I was just really tired. So I just passed out. But I don't necessarily like the sibling rivalry thing because there's no sibling rivalry between them. Stephanie is passive aggressive and then you've got aggressive Shane. There's no rivalry. There's no banter. There's no buddy heads. There's no any of that. And it was just stupid to have Stephanie back in there when it was fine with just Shane. And Stephanie made more appearances than Shane did. And Shane made more orders than Stephanie did. It's a given that Stephanie shouldn't be there. Seriously. But as for the whole Montreal screw job thing, that did piss me off last night. But I will say this. I didn't know much about Lil Nate because I was going back and forth between WCW and um, WWE. Well, WWF. But I, I vaguely remember Lil Nate. But other than that, it's nice that they actually gave people who didn't know about Lil Nate a little history lesson. I enjoyed that. I did. And it's always good to, to, you know, spat out the history, especially if it's germane to the entire story. So I enjoy that. I, I think that that was a really great idea. But other than that, y'all, I got no beef with this Raw, except for maybe the few stuff that I actually did talk about that didn't make sense storyline-wise. It doesn't affect the overall viewing of the show for me. I actually thought the show was actually pretty decent. The wrestling, we're finally getting back to wrestling. These are some great wrestling matches, especially with Becky and Emma. I enjoyed it, even though Becky landed on her head, and I hope that she's all right. But other than that, we're getting back to wrestling, guys. 
We really are. And this is this is the best moment to do it. I just hope that they do a little bit more with the women's. But other than that, these matches were pretty good. And even the match with with um with Goldust and uh, Fandango versus Tyler Breeze and Our Truth was actually entertaining. So I got no beef with the show. But I want to hear your thoughts about this. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how you guys feel about this Raw and what you would change about it. Because honestly, I think it's entertaining. And if they keep up this momentum, it's going to be a pretty good Extreme Rules. I'm kind of excited about it. Nature Girl 30 signing off. Peace out, y'all. Later.